People will always show you who they truly are. They reveal their true nature, sometimes in the very first moments that we meet them in. But we still miss it. We must believe them when they show us who they are. Deep down, you know the truth. You always knew. Trust your gut instinct because your body doesn't lie. There's a lot we don't know about this case. The evidence we've seen in the almost 2,000 page discovery is still just a small glimpse into what really happened. There's still so much that we don't know. We don't know what was in the minds of each person in this case. But we can learn to read people and learn to read between the lines to try to understand what was meant by something that was not directly spoken or written. In doing this, we may be able to figure out the true meanings and intentions behind what people say. What someone does not say can be just as important as what they do say and can reveal their thought process. If we listen carefully, we can identify the hidden meanings behind what people desperately try to keep secret and wish to not reveal about themselves. Many people, including myself, have spent a lot of time studying and analyzing Chris Watts. We have all discovered lie after lie that he is told to try to cover up the truth and keep his true nature hidden. After some ugly truths were revealed about Chris's family, it became obvious that the Watts family share the same desperation in wanting to hide the truth. So I no longer feel the need to analyze Chris Watts because I believe that looking at the behavior of his family and their desperate attempts to lie and deflect the truth will give us an understanding as to why Chris Watts is who he is and why he did what he did. So let's look at the Watts family's behavior. I'll show you that they have repeated the same patterns, the same cycles, and the same mistakes over and over again. In the beginning, I tried not to judge the Watts family too harshly. They were shocked and hurting and had maybe spoke out too soon before really thinking things through. It was understandable to me that they didn't want to believe what their son had done. Looking back now, after all that has happened, it's clear that this family did not have the best intentions. Ronnie and Cindy Watts were interviewed about one week after Chris pled guilty to his crimes. I believe this was the first attempt to defame Shanann Watts and blame her for the murder of her children. 
So guilty play or not, the Chris Watts story is not over, not by a long shot. Good evening, and thanks for watching Denver 7. I'm Andrew Heath. And I'm Shannon Ogden. Denver 7's Thomas Hoppo is the first reporter to ask Watts' parents their thoughts on his potential life sentence and what they believe really happened to Shannon, Bella, and Celeste. These are the parents of Chris Watts, the man who pled guilty to killing his pregnant wife, Shanann, and two kids, Bella and Celeste. Have you been able to see him? At no, all? no. Well, we, we, about prison? we got to see him one time. That was that Monday, right before the plea deal. That Monday right night. before the plea deal, and that was it. How did he kill her? How did he say he did it when he snapped? Well, uh, he said he did the same thing that she did to him, that she did to the girls. With, the, with his attorneys here, are you guys frustrated with the direction they may have? Through, yes, I am. I am absolutely frustrated. I think he was coerced at all. I don't know. I don't know. He, uh, I have no idea. I just want him to fight. I want this plea. I want him to not take this plea deal. I want him to, to plead not guilty to the children. I just want to make sure he's doing the right thing. Yes. I mean, if he does it, if he didn't kill the children, I want him to say so. Them, let them Are you guys worried about some of the backlash about maybe coming out and speaking on behalf of Chris and what it might what it might do to your guys' relationship and you know speaking out like this to, about a woman who can't defend herself right yeah. now? Well, Shanann, I mean, she was. You have to get to know her to be around her. But that way. His parents went into details about the relationship problems Shanann and Chris and allegedly Thomas, had. The parents reached out to you because they wanted to tell everybody that their son is not a monster, right? But they also pointed out that they did not have a very good relationship with Shanann, right? Right. Yeah, that was made very clear yeah. in that interview that we did. They did not have a good relationship, they said, from the start. And they understand that the family is hurting right now, Shanann's family. And they just want everything to come out the truth and they are believing their son but they are torn as well in this interview they make it clear that they are believing the story that chris told his dad they believed the ridiculous story that shanann killed the girls and he went into a rage and killed her so what's hidden here that we can uncover they went into detail about Chris and Shanann's relationship and their relationship with Shanann, which means they most likely shared all the stories, the wedding, Nutgate, all those stories that we later heard. They most likely shared them here, but we didn't hear those stories in this interview. The newscaster said they made it very clear that they didn't have a good relationship with Shanann. So why do you think they chose not to share those stories? Maybe because they were irrelevant. Or maybe they were concerned with the backlash they might get because this was a form of victim bashing. This should have been a huge red flag for the Watts family. It should have been their first sign of knowing that what they were doing was wrong. Her family's attorney sent us this statement. Their false statements, however hurtful and inaccurate, will never alter the truth about Shanann and will never alter the truth about the crimes committed by their son. Her memory and reputation deserves to be protected, and her family is fully prepared to do so. The Ruseks understood exactly what the Watts were doing. They quickly realized that they were trying to damage Shanann's reputation because they probably thought that they could flip the narrative, or at least they could justify what their son had done. The Watts ignored these signs and continued on their quest to spread outright lies and hate about Shanann Watts. Since Cindy's first attempt to make Shanann look bad didn't go as planned, she went on to do another interview. When and where did he meet Shanann? They met in 
he liked her, she liked him, but it didn't, I don't think that it was love at first sight or anything. It was always a little, a little strange that she always said a lot of things about Chris in front of me that I didn't like. Like this isn't the kind of person I would date. Uh, he doesn't know how to do this or he doesn't know how to do that. Um, he looks like a skater boy. Look at his hair. Look how much stuff he puts on his hair. It's just, it was just on and on and on and I just got a bad feeling. Did they get married in North Carolina? They did. Mm -hmm. How was that? Oh, we didn't attend. Really? Mm -mm. We didn't attend because Shanann and I just couldn't get along. And um, I don't, I didn't like the way she, she treated him. Christopher was, always seemed anxious. And he, he, when she needed something, I mean, he would run. He wouldn't walk, he would run, he would get it. He just always seemed to be right there at, at her beck and call. And that, did that seem odd to you? Or? Very odd, it was very odd. I, he just seemed nervous. But I think as the years went on, I think it just, being, being in a, that kind of a relationship which the social worker even said, they, that marriage should have ended a long time ago. I don't think he just had the right person at his side. I don't. That relationship was toxic from the very beginning. You know, they are not, they are not compatible anymore. And he was not happy anymore. And uh, I finally thought, uh, he's finally seen the light. I thought, I don't believe it. I didn't believe they were missing. I believe that she was going to punish Chris. She was just going to punish him, take the girls, and just punish him. I had no idea of anything else. I still was not worried. I hadn't, I was not worried. I just thought Shanann had run off with girls. And um, I still was, I was not worried. You know, I thought she has just gone off and I'm going to punish you for this and you can worry about me. It's very clear what Cindy chose to use this opportunity for. Let's talk about some of the things that Cindy could have said. She could have talked about how incredibly tragic this was. She could have used this time for something positive. She could have spoken about how important it is to seek out help if you are having problems in a marriage. She could have talked about not letting anger or resentment build up against a spouse. She could have said if you are having issues in your marriage and you start to have bad thoughts, get away, separate from each other, don't destroy your family, don't destroy your own life by committing an awful crime like this. Cindy did not take this opportunity to do or say anything positive. She chose to spend most of this interview talking about Shanann, and once again, her hatred for her was blatantly obvious. Thoughts out of my head, I, I, what I think could have happened, but I need to know. And I think in time, he will tell me. Probably nothing you ever would have imagined you no. would have faced. Never, never, no, and, and not, not from the, the son that I raised and Ronnie raised and, and our children, you know, we just, we just did everything for them. We worked for them and we wanted them to have a good, good life, good education and we stressed education. Uh, and they're, they were both doing well. Again, Cindy ignored the backlash she received from the things she said 
or didn't say in these interviews. Next, she decided to write a book to spew her hate for Shanann and excuse her son's horrible actions. Several chapters were leaked to Reddit, Facebook, and read aloud on YouTube. People were outraged, and thankfully this book was never completed and published. Poor Cindy. This was not turning out like she had planned, but her relentlessness would not allow her to just give up. She still pushed forward. Only this time, she would have a different strategy, since some people still refused to hate Shanann based on her opinion she would begin to manipulate others into telling her stories. Oh, and she would need to bring in reinforcements. Her daughter Jamie and her friends could get the job done. All I want is the truth. I just want the truth. That's it. <laughs> Well, I, I want Chris to have his day in court. I mean, I need to There's know. doubt. I have doubt that he did it. I can't see that he did it. I just cannot see him doing that as much as he loved his girl. I just don't see it. I just can't see him doing it. I just wanted to make sure that he has a, I just wanted a defense. I wanted him to be defended. They said they would defend him if he wanted to, to go forward, but he said he didn't want to go forward. I'd fight. I'd fight to the end. Have you reconciled the idea that he could have done all of this? Yes. And that scares me to death. It scares me to death to think that he could have done all of this. And I don't want to go there. Don't want to go there right now.